Hi, what we were going to look at today is uh, a little bit more with Rhino 4 and what I was hoping to check out was just uh, allocating materials in uh, Flamingo NXT. We've previously done a little bit of a tute uh, using the standard materials in Rhino uh, but uh, one of the most popular interfaces or the, one of the most popular rendering pl uh, platforms in Rhino is uh, Flamingo and the one that there's due for release shortly is NXT so I thought we'd just look at it, some basic materials on this today. So that being said the first thing we need to do is we've got our architectural model in front of us here we cl click on uh, the NXT tab roll down to control panel and we've got four tabs under control panel the rendering properties, the environment which is the background issues, how it's going to be lit and materials. Now we have it preset to uh, exterior daylight so I'll just very quickly render that so you can see what we've got at the moment okay something very simple like that okay and now that's using the previous uh, materials that were allocated in Rhino however if you want more subtlety you can have your materials uh, allocated through Flamingo. So very simply we can allocate a simple basic color so let's make it red, I'll just call it red. So we're deciding to make our, oh, I won't make it bright red, I'll make it a dark maroon color. Okay, click OK and there it is on the, on the menu there. We can drag and drop that onto any part of the architecture for example, or and now I'll just render it so you can sort of see what we get. That immediately allocates that colour onto that part of the model. So we've now got a red detail. Just stop that. Or alternatively, and a better way to do it is to allocate your materials via the layers menu. So in this particular case, we'll go to walls. We click on the little circle, we allocate it via the plugin, we browse, and there it is under the Flamingo materials, which is the plugin that we're rendering under. We double click on that, you can sort of see the name given to the material red, and now all of the walls in the, the model, I'll just move that over there, will be rendered to the rend to the uh, flamingo allocated flamingo color so we now have a rather bright house our client doesn't like that so and rightly so it's a fairly bla uh, bold statement to make in the architecture so we'll just stop that ray trace okay we can then go back to the flamingo menu and either double click on it and to open the editor window or you can right click and get it that way and let's say we wish to change the color of the house to a more subdued fawny color that it was before okay and I'll just yeah, that was the previous one I'll just move that to one side and we'll render it again and you can sort of see it's already updated in the, the main modeling window which is switched to so that's our most basic material so all you need to do to do that is on the materials tab of the control panel you can see here control panel materials tab there's a little icon in this upper left hand corner press down and you've got a selection of different material types so the one we went for there is the most basic one new solid colored material it's basically the same as the rhino defaults but once it's in there you can subtly change it uh, a little bit more effectively the next one down is for glossy materials in metal the one beneath that is for glass transparent materials the one beneath that is for plastic materials but we'll do one more today uh, which is a new texture set. Uh, let me check actually I'll cancel that. We'll do it as a just a new texture material. So in this particular case 
you're making a material finish out of a JPEG image. So what I normally do is I keep Adobe Bridge open with my various materials there and you can sort of see there's a various pictures of all manner of materials. Okay, what we're going to do is make the house a brick house with that yellow piece of brickwork there. You just remember the code number. I'll just move that back and we'll make it brick 10. Displacement map, uh, sorry, a diffusion map. Click open. Takes a moment to load. Now you have to remember the pixel size. At the moment, it's assuming that the size of the, the bitmap is 0.3 of a meter by 0.16 of a meter. And in fact, if you have a look at the, the little image, it's more like 10 times that. Okay, so we've now corrected it so you can sort of see on that sphere there. If we change the size of the sphere by right clicking and bring up sphere radius. Let's make it about a metre in radius, OK. And now you can see what, in radius, so that's two metres high as a sphere, you can see how big that brickwork would be. So let's make it a box so you can see what the brickwork would look like. OK, and there you go. So we click OK. And I'll just rename that since we've got it there. Pretty quick. Now what we're going oh oh sorry. It's being mean to me. I already have brickwork there. Brickwork two. Okay, should be fine. Okay, now what we're going to do is go down to the layers menu again, and this time we'll select wall again, what was previously just red. We're going to change to brickwork. So we double click on the little circle icon there. We've got it on plugin click browse and we'll select the bitmap image that we turned into a material before brickwork 2 double click there it is you can see it on the material editor window brickwork 2 click OK and it changes on the render window on the model I'll just click it down so you can see it now the reason it's grey is it doesn't pick up on the render window that uh, it doesn't show the bitmaps up on the window, or it doesn't on my, my system anyway. Okay, what I'll do is click the big blue button so we start to render, and now it'll render that material using the brickwork we had before. So we've got our scale slightly wrong. You can see there that the brickwork needs to be bigger. Don't worry about the piers at this stage. So I'll stop that ray tracing. Right. And I'll go back to our control panel. Right click. Properties. Okay, so what we're going to do is the width is too big, so for that one meter window there, I will make it one meter. Let's see how it affects that. Way too big. Okay, the other way, sorry, I stand corrected. We'll make it six meters wide. So we're looking at that in comparison to a piece of one meter brickwork. Uh, it would be 0.7, about 10 courses high. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's about right. Click OK. OK, and now it, it should automatically adjust on our building model. And you can see now, particularly if I zoom in, we now have reasonably accurate representation. Now we haven't applied any bump to that, but for a medium distance where we're standing off from the model slightly, we don't need that bump map and it doesn't need the additional memory anyway to, to render it, you've got a good material rendition. So this is how we put uh, bitmap images and material finishes onto our models that are more complex than just flat colours. Okay. 
I'll do one more render just to illustrate that. Ooh. So we're up close to it. There we go. And there you can see applying material finishes like brickwork or timber or concrete or anything of that sort can be done relatively easy, easily using uh, Flamingo NXT and the, the mapped material. Okay, I'll just stop that. So just to recap, let it stop. Just to recap now, what we've looked at today is very briefly a new way of applying materials to our model using Flamingo NXT as the rendering uh, engine. We go to control panel and then under control panel we go to the materials tab and under the materials tab we've got a variety of ways that we can construct, construct materials and the two we looked at today was the very simple new solid colored material and the very useful new textured material. Okay, hope that's of uh, use to everyone today. Speak to you soon. Bye.